Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. If you've never ever made a hat in your life before this could be your lucky day. This is loom knitting and this is an adult size hat and it is knitted and it will stretch to your head. It is an adult size. So if you're looking at these rings here if you ever buy a kit the first one here is for like stockings. The second one here is for babies and this is about six months to one year of age. The next one here is adults and this is just an accessory one for making other things. So there's not a size in this particular package that will allow you to do a general kit uh, like a six to eight years old. So that's something that you have to consider and you probably can find those looms individually. But today I am going to concentrate on the adult version. I'm gonna give you the information that you're going to need. We are going to be doing the rib stitch just like you see. The ribs are done afterward near the end of the project and so I'm going to show you the ins and outs on getting started today. So off screen there's going to be two balls in place so we're double stranding for this. The reason for it is that these pegs are so far apart and they're so thick that you need to have thicker yarn. This is just a level four yarn but if you put two pieces of yarn together you can actually increase the thickness. The fastest way to use one of these tools is to get an empty pen. So what you're looking for is a pen that can fit between the pegs so that you can circle around this thing. If it doesn't fit in it's not as fun and it, it's actually quite inconvenient. So you always see tutorials of people hand wrapping this stuff. Nobody's got time for that. I have a short attention uh, span to be honest with you. So at the faster I can go on a project the better. So what I can do is that if you get an empty pen like this and some of the kits actually provide that to you. I just get a, a spare piece of wire. You can use fishing line or whatever or floral wire if you wish and I'm just gonna feed it through. So all I'm just going to do is put both of the strands onto the fold of that wire like this and I am just going to pull that through. I know I don't got time to play games. <laughs> so now I have a yarn feeder just a care of a uh, spare pen and now we're going to begin the casting on process. So I'll show you that in just a second. One more thing you have another tool this is called a yarn pick. These ones here that come with the kits um cheap. <laughs> I mean cheap. Um, I have had a lot of issues with these breaking. There's a reason why they sell replacements quite easily for $1.79 Canadian. This here is in the Cricut section. This is uh, called the Weeder and it's a lot more sharper so don't hurt yourself with it but it's also more professional. It's also thicker so it's more to hold on to. So this is something that you may wanna consider uh, if you're gonna seriously get into this. So this is called a Weeder. So let's uh, begin the casting on process right now. I'm going to assume that you do not know how to knit or crochet so I'm going to show you how to start off with the slip knot. A slip knot is the first knot to get yourself started so don't tie it on like it's a bow tie. So to do this just grab both strands if you're double stranding which I strongly recommend and wrap it around your finger twice. I'll hold. There's no rush today. So just put out your finger and just wrap out the yarn like this around your finger and then pinch. We have videos on this. It's called a sl uh, slip knot. So what I want you to do, play the game of leapfrog. I want you to leapfrog this character over here and leapfrog over it but land on the other side of the finger. So leapfrog whoop and then take this one. This one is so upset that it just got leaped over that it, it's gonna leap over this one but it's gonna leap so far it's gonna go right up over top of your finger like that. And that's the starting knot. Let me just show you again. Okay so just put out your finger and wrap twice and pinch. Play the game of leapfrog so he well they goes over and then this one is so upset that it leaps over but misses and goes right up over top of the finger. This is called a slip knot. So now what I want to do is take my finger out and keep that slip knot available to you and I wanna put it so I'm right handed so I'm gonna put it to the left but if you're left you might wanna go to the other side and put it onto the loom with the straggler which is the loose end towards the inside of the loom and pull on it but don't pull on it to the point that you're tying it down, right? So now that the yarn is here and on the inside we wanna go to the next peg over. So if you were left handed you may wanna go in the opposite direction. If you're right handed you wanna go in this direction. It's up to you and I'm right handed so this video is right handed. So I'm going to come around the next peg so just from the inside come out and then circle. So don't circle like huge. Just kind of just wiggle yourself around that peg. So come into the next one and you see that you're literally painting what color. 
and what I want you to do is go about halfway down. I know you can't see that from here but if you don't you can always just push it down halfway at the end of the round and all I'm just doing is circling around like this. Do you see how this tool is awesome? So what you wanna do is kind of monitor the yarn coming from the yarn ball to make sure that there's no tangles and it's nice and easy going into the loom itself. So a lot of people if they don't wrap it properly they end up being too tight and then they end up snapping pegs. So this tool helps you to be able to put it on naturally. So you don't want it to force the yarn on. You want it to kind of lead it on and you're gonna go all the way around. On your last peg you're gonna go around it and then you're going to come out. So make sure that you get everything good. So you're gonna come on to the outside and you can let it rest. So what I want to do is look at it and make sure that these are halfway down and so that you will be able to see the difference. So you're building like a layer cake. So to continue the casting on process I want you just to tighten this back up and start in the next peg and begin to circle once again. Again you are just drawing with the yarn around each peg. This is called E wrapping. It's forming the letter E. This is why it's called E wrapping. So you can see I'm not fighting my way around this thing. It's just literally gliding and painting on. So your tension of your hat should be really quite good. Okay, so we're coming around to the end. So this notch helps me to be able to see that. Now it's on the outside and before you go any further I want you to pick it up and just use your finger and hold it to the ring. This is where I finished. So it's the first one I wanna knit with. So I call this the bottom of the ring even though it's upside down and the reason why it's upside down is that I can just reach out and grab this one and it's got a leapfrog over this one and over the peg. So I'm just literally going to just pull towards me and just lean down. So using the weight of my hand and arm I can pull down really easily and then I use my thumb and just push it halfway back. Once the first one is knitted then you can just easily relax because if you don't knit this one first all of that winding is gonna come undone. You're then going to start in the next one. This one happens to be where the slip knot is and you're just going to pull down and continue to knit in a circle all the way around. So remember it's double stranded so two strands equals one and this is giving you double thickness to have even better hat. Now because this is marling the hat will be really uniquely painted because the transition on both balls are different. So I want you to knit all the way around and then maybe back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around and you can see that I'm pushing them halfway back. If you don't you'll have to use your fingers and push them back. So normally I just kind of follow it with my thumb and push. So this is the first round. This is called an E-wrap cast on. So you've just officially cast on. So what I want you to pay attention to the most is the following. I'm not gonna have you count the number of rounds because I can give you a little tip. If you look at this you're going to see two layers of strands. So this is one and then this is two and now each time you go to knit with this you're going to create another layer of this. I need you to continually go in a circle so that you get 17 of these cross strands. As it gets bigger you're gonna be able to pull it apart and see it's like the rings of a tree and you'll see it growing out. So um, just remember everything is working in pairs so there's one and two. And now let's begin just one regular round of knitting and then we'll talk about the, the brim in just a moment. When I'm loom knitting I usually sit with my legs crossed so that I can use the top of my leg to be the balance point for this. To start another round make sure you tighten this back up and start on the next one and begin to wrap again. So all you're just going to do is continually knit, sorry wrap and then knit and then wrap and knit and I want you to be able to see 17 of those cross strands 
that will happen. So you're essentially putting in the third cross strand now. So if you wanna write one through 17, this technically is going to be number three. If that matters to you, that, that's up to you on how you wanna do it. You'll be able to count the 17. On the last one, come to the outside. Again, pinch, turn upside down because it's easier. Do the one that is last and pull over and therefore you can relax that and then begin moving around just like this. So what I want you to do is that now that I've just knit that, you can see there's one and there's two and three. You'll be able to count 17. So meet me back here when you get 17 of those done and it's just like I just showed you. So when you get back around um, and just pick off all these, then you'll just spin it again and knit, spin and knit and get 17 rounds done that are 17 of those cross lines done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When I last left you just a few seconds ago, I did this off camera and I've decided to continue to knit because I wanna show you how to do the brim. So on the other side is where all the good project that when you're wearing it, people will see you wearing this. This is the inside of the hat. So now I want to create the permanent fold that exists within this. Okay, so instead of sewing, we're going to do a little technique of taking the beginning. So I told you that there's gonna be a total of 17. So if I just pick this up and get some light behind it, do you see those lines? You should be able to count 17 of those lines going across. I have a hard time holding everything, but do you see them? One, two, three. So there should be a total of 17 right from here right to the base. Now we know that when we started is that we started on this one. Do you see this notch? We started here. So we know that the slip knot when we started was on that one here. So I wanna pull that and I wanna take that strand where that exists and I wanna put it back onto the same peg. So I'm just gonna fold it over like this and just put over the, the two strands equals one. Remember because we've been double stranding. This is the starting and I want you to put it inside the hat. So just where it's gonna fold, just tuck it in. If you wanna cut it shorter, you can. It's up to you. And then I'm going to then use my tool. You can use your fingers as well. And if you pull back, you'll be able to see the next one. Okay, so you see this is the one that belongs to this one. So the next one is right here. So it's just the two strands. It's the very last one of those pieces, right? So once you do the, the next one, you should be able to just to pull those back and make sure you're always getting two because you know that you double stranded. So I just want you to can go all the way around and just put these in. So make sure that straggler is on the inside of the hat and you're gonna find your, your brim by the time you rotate all the way around. So please do this all the way around and just put me on pause and I'll show you what to do next. As I'm coming around, I have to tell you I have done many of these hats in the past, I always get this genuine thrill out of putting on the brim. <laughs> um, because you can actually see how everything is gonna look, right? And it's just, there's somewhat of a joy with that. So that's something that you can determine if you're feeling joy or not. If you're feeling like excitement, then you're in my club. And if not, maybe you'll be in my club later. <laughs> so I'm just going all the way around and I'm making sure every peg gets something. So if you think that you're missing a peg, which I think I might be, so here's how you're gonna do it. I could either re-edit and try to find that, but if not, just throw on something. This is on the inside of the pe of the hat. So if there's an imperfection, you won't even see it because it'll be on the inside. So I've thrown on an extra loop there. So what I have to do is just fold it up and I need you to push right down to the bottom, all of this. So please do that. It's easier for you to lay it flat and just push. So what we're going to do now is we're going to e-wrap again and we're going to secure this brim into position. So grabbing up your tool, just pull it nice and tight and starting in the next one like you normally would, I need you to e-wrap around. So there's gonna be a lot of yarn on the pegs at this moment. So you're not only continuing the project but you've got the fold of the brim in place so that it will become permanent and you don't have to sew it later because many of us really don't like sewing. I really don't mind um, but it's something that you can avoid. So like before when you e-wrap, once you're all the way around, come out to the last one and then turn it upside down. 
and pinch. So here's the, the trick. So you can see there are three sections, one, two, and three. So you need to get these two over this one and over the peg. If it's too tight, just do one at a time. So do this one first, the middle one, and go up and over, and then do the other one. But chances are you can do the two sets and just push them down. So chances are you can do the two sets at the same time. So just coming up underneath both, just grabbing it and push over, leaving just the one. So you can just scoop up underneath and pull up. So I want you to go all the way around and then I'm gonna show you another trick here in just a moment. So and see me back here in just a moment as I said. So I'll see you in a moment. So what I need you to do is grab a piece of string that can go all the way around your project. Starting in the very first one, just lay it on the outside and just go back and forth. And what this is going to do, this is like a, it's called a stitch marker. And this is just going to help us see where the stitches are in the future. So when we're doing the ribbing, if you've decided to do that, and even if you didn't, it's still a great idea to put it in, that this will just be a visual indicator of where you wanna go. So just leave it so that it will be able to get out. Now we're just gonna push that down and now we're gonna e-wrap that into position. So let's just consider we're doing the next round. So we're just gonna e-wrap and just stay on top of it. Okay, and just do that. And this will help us count it. So at the end we're gonna pull out that stitch marker. It's just there in position. Now that I e-wrapped all the way around, I'm just gonna flip it. And I wanna just kind of ignore that green in there, but I wanna keep it as part of the project. Okay, so just do the first one just to secure it as always. And just let that green just kind of go over. And then we're gonna do the next one. Like that. Okay, and then you'll do the next one. Put the green over with it. And etc. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna help you be able to count later in down the road. So do this all the way around, just E, sorry, just uh, knitting and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, now that I've gone all the way around, you can see the green is just holding in there. So that's just a stitch marker. So if you're a woman then, or you're making it for a woman, you're gonna wanna go 23 more revolutions. So this green will act as the stopping point for where you wanna stop. So if you're doing men's, you'll wanna do 25. So once you begin again, just ignore the green going forward and start e-wrapping again and I need you to do the number of rounds. So you're either gonna do 23 or 25 and if you wanna change the height of it then just change the number of rounds that you wanna do. So I found for the men's size for me comfortably is 25 for sure. So that's what my goal is here. Okay and so I'm just gonna flip it and you're just going to knit as always and stop when you can see where that line is. So once you be able to, let me just do a few more here. See, you'll be able to see where that line is when you pull it, see? So that's what my goal is and uh, so you can see that this is gonna be the one and then it'll be two, three, all the way to 23 or 25. Meet me back here in just a moment and I'll have that done for you. When I last left you, we were just putting in the green. So I just w watched some TV and you can see the other side looks amazing. So you have to make a decision at this point. Are you wanting this or are you wanting the rib stitch? So if you are wanting this, you can just proceed to the next part of this tutorial where we're going to just fasten off and just make the top of the hat. If you would like the ridges, we're about to do that next and I'll show you how. Maybe you wanna see how it's done before you make a decision at this, at this as well. It'll take you just about over an hour to be able to do the rib stitching for what I'm about to show you. Now you're gonna ask yourself why didn't we do that while we were doing this? It is such a pain to do the, the pearl stitching on this thing that what I'm about to show you is gonna save a lot of time uh, versus how you could have done it uh, before. So what I want to do is that I want to push this so that the inside is coming up. Now we're kind of done with this yarn here. So I want you to cut this yarn about maybe just over two feet 
and we're going to use that later to be able to finish off the top. So the, you won't have to worry about the balls being dragged with you as you're doing the next part of the process. So just let this hold. Now we put in the stitch marker here to indicate where we should stop when we're about to do this. The thing that I need to tell you is that when we were wrapping this we did what was called as the E wrap. So we did uh, an E. So when we go to do this um, particular stitch concept we have to put that E back in but we're gonna put it back in on this side so that it appears uh, ridged on the other side. So what I want you to do is that we were here this is the, remember, this is the first one of the round and that's where we're gonna start. You can only do this one loop at a time and it may scare you when you do it but it's actually pretty easy. And so if you ever saw any imperfections in your loom knitting you can actually take it apart too. So what I want you to do, just lay it down and we're going to start on there. Now there's an equal number of pegs on this round. So you could do every other one as a rib stitch. So that's the nice thing that we're about to do. So I'm gonna start with this one and I'm going to release it. So I'm gonna pick it up and release it. And what I want you to carefully do and you're gonna be probably nervous at first but don't be is just stretch it out. So you can see I'm just stretching it and I want to pull this yarn. Now it's only gonna release the amount of yarn that is in between these two pegs. That's why we're only taking one peg off at a time. And we're just gonna keep pulling until we get to the stitch marker that is indicated way back at the end. Don't be scared to put your hand underneath this to also use your fingers to push it out so you can see it even more. The goal for you is to make sure that you end on the same round and that's why we marked it with the stitch marker. And it also helped you to be able to count as you were doing this as well. So there is 25 rounds for me. Now this is a roving based yarn so it can actually snag with itself but just kind of be gentle about it and just keep on going. Once you get to understand this you'll see where to stop anyway. So the first time I did it I didn't use a stitch marker but I don't know if I was actually perfect. So I wanna stop, to see where the stitch marker is? I wanna stop that one there. Now I want you to be very careful. This already has a twist in it so I don't want you to untwist it and what I want you to do is if you're right handed just position this so you're going to use a crochet hook a crochet hook that is six and a half millimeter size K and what we're going to do is that we are going to put this back together all of these but on this side. So let me show you how. Now in crochet if you're familiar with it when we go through a loop so I'm just gonna put the loop on. So it's already got a twist to it because it didn't untwist when it did that so it's good. So what I want to do is that I, when I chain I'm just going to grab the next two strands because everything has been double stranded. So these two strings belong to each other and you're gonna see all the pairs belong together. And you're going to just grab that and pull that through that loop. So turn that hook upside down and pull through. And you will get comfortable doing this. You're just gonna pull through. The problem is is that I told you that we twisted when we did the e-wrapping. So what we have to do is release this off so just pinch it take the hook out and come on the other side like this and then twist. I'll show this several times so it's all good. So now you're gonna grab the next two strands that belong together. So you see they're all belong together. They're coming out of the same spot. So pull through, release it, grab the hook and twist. And then grab the next two, pull through, pinch, and do that. And what you're doing is you're applying the twist. If you don't apply the twist, you see how much yarn there is that exists between the stitches. If you don't do the twist that will open up and it will cause the hat to be misformed. So you're putting the twist back into the hook. So for those that wanna be more technical, the loom is the size gauge and so the, this amount of yarn that's being pulled up all these strands here, the distance, the gauge has already been determined. So the hook is just the tool in order to get that to come back together. So what I want you to do is work your way back all the way up to the top and you're going to notice that on this side you're having this show up but what this is doing is it's creating an indentation on the other side. So let me just do this one and just turn. 
and on the other side you can see that we've just created an indentation right there. So what I want you to do is just go all the way back to the top of this and I'll see you back there in just a moment and you wanna do, do every other peg just like this. So you're gonna take the next set of loops off and then just go all the way to the base and then work your way to the top and I'll see you at the top of the loom in just a moment. So when I get to the last one which is next I'm gonna pull that through. So I'm also gonna twist that one. So don't, you have to twist every one of them. Getting it back onto here is a little bit difficult. So you wanna put it back on so that this strand here is going to end up on this side. So you kinda wanna loop it around. So what I like to do, what I had, what I did before is that I put the hook over here and I grab that tool and I'm just going to pick up that piece because it's already been twisted and I'm just gonna pull it onto the peg like that and then I can release this hook out. And I know what you're thinking, what, well that was a lot of work but in actual fact this is so much easier than doing the purling. So on the other side it just now created a ridge right there. So the more ridges you do the more that'll appear, right? So to move on you're just gonna skip one peg because you don't wanna do every one of them because then there's no point. So then you'll do this one and then go all the way to the base where you have the stitch marker and you'll stop and then you'll just feed your way all the way back up. So when I come back I'll have that done for you and then we'll move on and I'll show you how to cast off at the very end of this. So a second ago I just had one done. So I just watched an episode of Star Trek Discovery and this is what it looks like. So every other peg has been done as you can see. So this is the inside of this. So what I want you to do now that stitch marker can now come out. So you should just be able to pull on that and it will come all the way out. So therefore you don't have to count anything any further. So it's good. So even if you're not going to rib at this moment and you decided that you wanna keep it all the knit look, the uh, casting off is going to be the same regardless on how you finished it just minutes ago. So let's uh, review on how to take this off the loom and form the top of the hat. So using the two strands that we had that we've been using and it was cut at just over two feet. What I would like to do is start in the next loop that's available to you and I want you to go from this part and pick it up and throw it over but continue to push it onto the needle. So just turn it over and the reason why I wanna turn it over this strand that's hanging down won't catch in the pegs if you do it the other way. So let's pick up. So I'm picking up the very next one and sliding and pulling this through and I'm going to pull that off. Okay, so you wanna make sure this is not gonna twist. So you're kinda grabbing it so it's going to line up like that. So you're just going to go all the way around to so get the next one. See how I'm moving this strand here? Then it won't tangle. See? A nice straight across. I'll show you one more time. So just picking up and I want you to go all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So we're going to pull it shut at the end. So I'm just coming up around and I'm just taking the last loop off and the loom is officially done. So I'm just going to pull this done. So let's take the loom off we're good to go. We'll save that for another tr uh, project another time. And now we've gone safely all the way around. This is the top of the hat and you're going to carefully but firmly pull on this strand and you're close lining the entire top closed. Be firm about it. Now how you finish it off is that you'll have a little bit of a pucker here. You can throw a pom pom over that if that bothers you to hide that but what you wanna do, see where I am? I'm gonna go completely the opposite. Just grab into some strands here and then back to where that's coming out of. And what this is going to do, it's gonna pull across the top. Okay and then I wanna go in a cross formation so I'm gonna come in from the side of the one. Make sure you actually get into some real stuff here and go across. And now sticking your hand down in, hopefully you're, I just have a blunt one but I wanna go down through the middle. And I can feel it coming through the other side with my hand and I'm gonna turn this thing inside out and pull through. 
pull firm and then just go under some fibers and tie this into a knot. If you're concerned about it, you can tie an extra knot if you want to. And then you're good to go. You're done. So if you wanna put on a pom-pom on this thing, you can. It will change the look of it completely. I'm a pom-pom lover. And then what you wanna do, because you've been doing the ridge stitching, even if you haven't done the other stuff, just take your hands and just kinda push it out and this will equalize all the stitches. And this is your new ribbed hat. And this is also the way that you could do a regular hat without the ribbing as well. And now for, therefore I have a nice set. So you could just shape it, good to go. And that's it for today. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.